If you think American horror movies are only gross, then this 1982 film The Thing will definitely change your mind. Although it has some stomach-turning scenes, it is predominantly terrifying. Every appearance of the creature sends chills down your spine. What's even scarier is that it can mimic the form of any living being. One moment it could be your teammate, and the next moment it mutates into something horrifying. For those who like thrills and spills, fasten your seatbelts and let's revisit this classic masterpiece that has left countless people with childhood traumas. The story begins in Antarctica at 40 degrees below zero. A dog is desperately fleeing for its life, pursued closely by a helicopter. The co-pilot relentlessly fires his sniper rifle and even uses grenades to bombard the dog. However, the dog evades the attacks with its agile movements. They eventually arrive at an American research camp. The sound of the explosions attracts the camp's personnel to gather and watch. Sensing danger, the dog runs straight towards them, but the people in the helicopter have no intention of letting it go. A man takes out a grenade again and prepares to bomb, but his hand slips and the grenade falls behind him. He tried to save but it was too late. Another teammate frantically shouts something, but the language barrier prevents the Americans at the camp from understanding. Unexpectedly, in the next moment, the man shoots directly at the dog amidst the crowd. A bullet hits one person's thigh, yet the man pays no attention and continues pursuing the dog. What crime could the dog have committed that led these two individuals to such great lengths to kill it? Although the Americans in the camp were not sure what was happening, they chose to open fire to ensure the safety of those in the camp. Clark, who is responsible for feeding the sled dogs, adopts the dog. The others extinguish the burning helicopter. Based on the clues left by the wreckage, they learn that these two men are from a nearby Norwegian research team. In order to figure out what happened, Pilot McCready decides to investigate with Copper. When they arrive at the Norwegian camp, they find it in ruins. The people inside have turned into frozen statues. Their deaths gruesome and chilling. What's going on here? The two continue inside. They notice scattered documents and a box of videotapes, which catch Kappa's attention. He speculates that they might hold valuable information and decides to take them back for further research. In the innermost room, they discover a massive block of ice. It seems like something broke out from inside. McCready realizes that it is not a good place to stay and intends to leave immediately. However, just as they reach the entrance, they spot a charred corpse. It appears to be human, but with distinct differences. In order to find out what it was, the two decided to take it with them. Later that night, under the unsettling gaze of the dog, they bring the body back. Upon opening it, a foul stench fills the air. But what shocks everyone even more is the horrifying appearance and twisted body of the corpse. And all this was watched by the dog on the sidelines, through the dissections performed by Blair and Fuchs. They astonishingly discover that the corpse was once human. However, the exact cause of its mutation remains unknown, leaving them perplexed. Meanwhile, in order to prevent the dog from wandering around, Clark had to keep it together with the sled dogs in a cage. Little did he know that this action would lead to the death of the dogs in the cage. At first, everything seemed normal, but as soon as Clark left, the atmosphere inside the cage became uneasy. The other dogs suddenly became restless and started barking furiously at the new dog. As if sensing danger, suddenly, in the next moment, the dog underwent a transformation. Its head began to split, and numerous tentacles emerged from its body. This horrifying scene frightened the other dogs, and one of them attempted to bite through the iron mesh and escape. But it is in vain, for he remains trapped in his cage and lets the monster do what it wants. Hearing the commotion, Clark hurried back. Unexpectedly, as soon as the iron gate was opened, one of the startled sled dogs immediately escaped. Clark looked up, only to witness an incredibly horrifying scene. He quickly shut the iron gate, while McCready, alerted by the noise, pressed the alarm button, calling everyone to gather. McCready walks ahead with a gun, push open the metal door and see. The cute dog was found to have completely transformed into an extremely disgusting unknown creature. Everyone was petrified with fear, but McCready, quick to react, pulled the trigger, but it didn't even hurt to hit the monster's body. As the creature continued its transformation, Childs arrived just in time with a flamethrower and unleashed a torrent of flames upon the monster, finally putting an end to it. Then Blair proceeded to dissect the body. Based on the previously obtained corpse, he reached a conclusion. This unknown creature not only devours humans and animals, but it can also replicate their cells, thus perfectly imitating any living being. No wonder those two Norwegian men were willing to hunt down a dog at any cost. But where did this creature come from? 
the Norwegians must have discovered something. In the footage brought back by Copper, they finally obtained a crucial clue. It seems that the Norwegians found something huge under the ice. They made explosions and excavations. After pinpointing the precise location on the map, McCready decided to investigate once again. Soon the three of them reached their destination and were dumbfounded by what they saw. To their astonishment, a colossal alien spacecraft appeared within the enormous pit. Judging by the thickness of the ice layers, Copper speculated that the spacecraft had been there for at least 100,000 years. Shortly afterwards, they found a rectangular piece of ice hole not far from the pit, which was apparently the one taken by the Norwegian researchers. Taking a few fragments of the spacecraft wreckage, the three men returned to the camp before nightfall. The discovery of the extraterrestrial spacecraft left everyone in utter shock. It became apparent that the ice block brought back by the Norwegian team contained some form of extraterrestrial life. After chiseling open the ice, the alien organism inside was revived. As Blair looked at the photo of the Norwegians and the ice block, he seemed to have realized something. Upon returning to the laboratory, he immediately used the computer to simulate experiments, combining the cells of the creature and human cells. The results revealed that the creature's cells effortlessly devoured human cells and rapidly imitated them. Blair instantly realized the gravity of the situation and promptly retrieved a revolver from the drawer. Meanwhile, Windows and George were following Kappa's instructions to move the creature's body into a separate room and lock it up. I didn't expect that just after Windows left the monster that was dead was back in action. When he returned, George, who had been left alone in the room, was already dead. Windows hurriedly informed McCready and Fuchs about the incident, but when the three of them arrived at the room, George's body had mysteriously vanished. McCready glanced out of the broken window and saw that George had escaped. They immediately gave chase, and the commotion attracted the attention of the others who joined in the pursuit. From George's hands, it was evident that he had been infected by the creature, however, it hadn't had enough time to fully assimilate his appearance. Without hesitation, McCready knocked over the nearby oil canister and set it ablaze, burning the creature to death. This incident made McCready realize that the creature's cells were not easily killed. To prevent any further accidents, they gathered the remaining bodies and set them on fire. Just as they were finishing up, McCready, ready to return indoors, noticed Blair sneaking out of the helicopter. McCready immediately went to check and found that the helicopter's circuitry had been damaged by Blair. Confused by the situation, a gunshot suddenly rang out. McCready hurried towards the sound. Blair was found to be acting like a madman and was destroying equipment in the laboratory. He kept muttering that the creature only needed a single cell to mimic anyone. No one must be allowed to leave or something more terrible will happen. Childs attempted to intervene, but Blair pointed the gun at him. Finally, after the bullets had been fired, McCready took the opportunity to rush in with the plank, subduing Blair. To prevent further disruptions, they had no choice but to isolate Blair and keep him under guard. Just as McCready was preparing to leave, Blair warned him to be cautious of Clark. Clark spends the most time with dogs and is most vulnerable to infection. McCready came out and told everyone that it was highly likely that someone among them had been infected. If they didn't conduct a prompt investigation, they would all be doomed. However, with the monster's ability to perfectly mimic humans, how could they determine who the infected person was? Copper suggested a feasible solution extracting blood samples from everyone and mixing them with uncontaminated blood. If there was no reaction, it meant the person was normal. Conversely, a reaction would indicate a problem. However, when Copper went to collect the blood samples, he discovered that the samples in the cabinet had been deliberately destroyed. It was evident that someone had done it on purpose, but it also confirmed that there were already infected individuals among them, with everyone being a potential monster. Trust within the team crumbled, and some came close to engaging in a physical altercation. McCready intervened in time, calming everyone down temporarily. After all, internal conflict would only make the situation more complicated. The most important task at hand was to find an alternative method to identify the infected individual. Just as they were about to test the three most likely candidates, McCready noticed that Fuchs had suddenly disappeared. They left someone in the room to watch the three individuals while the rest split up to search. They must return within 20 minutes. Soon, McCready and the others found a charred corpse in the snowy terrain. Judging by the fallen glasses, it was none other than the missing Fuchs. He may have chosen to set himself on fire with a flamethrower before mutating. The three of them planned to return and inform the others, but McCready noticed that the light in his room was still on. He told Windows to go back first while he and Nulls went to investigate. However, 40 minutes had passed, and everyone else had already returned except for McCready and Nulls. They suspected that the two had been killed and decided to seal off the doors and windows. Just then, 
Nalls unexpectedly returned alone. He explained that he had accidentally gotten separated from McCrady and found fragments of his clothing on the way back. Consequently, he speculated that McCrady had likely been attacked by the monster. However, as soon as the words fell, the doorknob behind them suddenly turned. It was undoubtedly McCrady outside the door. No one dared to open the door. Unaware that he had the keys, McCrady quickly returned indoors through another door and locked the room door behind him. Without hesitation, Childs picked up a fire axe and started breaking down the door. They finally managed to open the door, only to find McCrady holding a flamethrower and explosives in his hands. He explained that he hadn't been infected, and if anyone insisted on taking action, they would all go down together. Seeing this, everyone reluctantly put down their weapons, but just as McCrady let his guard down, Nalls and another team member suddenly appeared behind him for a surprise attack. He instinctively fought back, but accidentally pushed his teammate too hard, causing them to fall unconscious. McCrady says he doesn't want to hurt anyone and picked up the flamethrower and explosives for self-defense. At the same time, he asked Copper to provide medical assistance to his fallen teammate. But just as Copper was performing CPR, however, a horrifying scene unfolded. Turned out that the teammate had already been infected by the creature, Copper, who had lost both hands, collapsed to the ground. Then a monster emerged from the torn open abdomen. Everyone was terrified by this sight. Except for McCrady, who quickly unleashed a burst of flames at the creature. They thought the monster was dealt with and immediately used a fire extinguisher to put out the fire. But unbeknownst to them, a separate head had split off on its own and tried to escape. Fortunately, it was noticed by the team member in time and McCrady once again raised the flamethrower to eliminate it. However, the crisis was far from over. In case there are still infected people left McCrady decides to conduct another blood test. If anyone resisted, they shouldn't blame him for being merciless. However, just at that moment, Clark suddenly launched an attack on McCrady from behind. However, within seconds, McCrady shot him dead on the spot. It was evident that Clark didn't trust McCrady, but if anyone refused to cooperate, their fate would be the same as Clark's. The others had no choice but to do as they were told. McCrady's new testing method was simple, inserting a heated wire into the blood to detect whether the person was a monster or not. Because each cell of the monster is a separate individual, it would undoubtedly react when attacked. After explaining the principle of the test, McCrady instructed Windows to draw a little blood from everyone, including themselves. Then, they proceeded to test each person one by one. Windows was the first to be confirmed as uninfected. So McCrady armed him with a flamethrower and positioned him on standby, ready to unleash the flames. Initially, several individuals passed the test without any issues. However, just as McCrady was preparing to test the next person, the blood in his hand suddenly exhibited a strong reaction. Then the tied-up teammate on one side immediately mutated. McCrady intended to unleash the flamethrower, but he discovered it malfunctioned at a critical moment. By that time, the creature had broken free and leaped onto the ceiling. Windows attempted to unleash the flames but was bitten on the head by the leaping monster, until Windows was bitten alive. Only then did the flamethrower in McCrady's hand return to normal. He decisively spews fire at the monster in a continuous stream. And the monster, wrapped in flames, broke through the dividing wall and staggered into the snow. Finally, McCrady threw a hand grenade, ultimately putting an end to the creature. After returning indoors, McCrady proceeded to incinerate the infected windows on the spot. However, the testing had to continue. Fortunately, the remaining people showed no signs of infection. Now, all they needed to do was test Blair, who was being held separately. If he passed the test, the crisis would be resolved once and for all. McCrady instructed Childs to stay put while he and two others went to test Blair. However, upon reaching the cabin, they discovered that the door was open, and Blair was nowhere to be found. The door had been locked from the outside, leaving them puzzled about Blair's escape. Suddenly, McCrady noticed traces of movement on the floorboards and, upon investigation, uncovered a secret passage. In the depths of the tunnel an unfinished spaceship appears in plain sight. At that moment, they finally realized that Blair had been infected all along. The reason he willingly allowed himself to be locked up here was to carry out his plan. But where had he gone? Unable to locate the creature, the three of them decided to destroy everything in the vicinity. However, as they were preparing the explosives, Nalls, who was stationed at the entrance, noticed that Childs, who was supposed to remain in place, had inexplicably left the camp. Without much time to think they first threw the bomb into the secret passage and blew up the hut and the spaceship. 
They then proceeded to the underground storage facility of the camp to install more explosives, intending to destroy the entire camp. However, as they were separately installing the bombs, Blair suddenly appeared and attacked one of their teammates. <laughs> Nalls, who heard the commotion, also walked over. By the time McCready realized what was happening, the two of them had vanished. He instantly realized that something was wrong so he immediately ignited the explosives in his hand. Unexpectedly, the ground at the far end began to upheave and swiftly approached McCready. Luckily, he managed to avoid the monster's attack but the bomb in his hand fell to the ground. The creature emerged from the ground, revealing its horrifying true form. Seizing the opportunity, McCready swiftly retrieved the bomb from the ground and hurled it towards the creature. Accompanied by a tremendous explosion, the monster and the entire camp were obliterated. However, the ordeal seemed far from over. McCready had just sat down to take a breather when Childs, who had just walked out of the camp, suddenly appeared behind him. Faced with McCready's questioning, Childs explained that he had seen Blair and followed him. But was that the truth? Childs was likely infected. And the film doesn't give an answer. The two of them sat there, waiting quietly for death to come.